right? Yes. All right. Um, thank you for joining this uh, session of the uh, Tampa um, Account Engagement Pardot Community Group. Um, we've got a, a really interesting uh, presentation today um, around B2BMA and a specific um, a specific function that um, that Timo has uh, came up with, and um, he agreed to uh, to share uh, what it is he built and um, and answer some questions and and so on so uh without further ado i will hand it over to Timo. thanks ben and just as a disclaimer i don't think that i'm the first one to have invented it but uh, at least i put it on ben's radar uh, so today we'll be talking about b2b marketing analytics <clears throat> i'll be doing a short intro into what it is because i know that it's not the most commonly used uh part of account engagement functionality by the way please do excuse me for using part of, I, you can't teach an old dog new tricks so i i sometimes call it by that lovely lovely name i'm gonna stop video since i'm start screen sharing just a moment let's see if that works whoa infinity window can you guys see my screen Yes, I can see it. Yeah. So I just have a few slides here that we'll go through in just a minute. Um, just a brief intro. I'm Timo Kovala. I work in Capgemini. So just a brief intro if you're not familiar with the company. We're a global company in over 55 countries. We have 350,000 people and we're one of the top five consultancies. Uh, working with Salesforce. So Salesforce is very much uh, my bread and butter, butter at work and, and also my company uh, focuses on it a lot. Personally, I work as an architect focusing on marketing technology solutions and helping companies align their sales and marketing better. So working with Parda is like very close to my heart and and I work as much with sales management as I do with marketing on on how to get the benefits out of it. I've done more, my share of work in, in architecture, but also project management, consultancy, training end users, doing service design and senior advisor roles as well. And I've also worked a few years in in-house uh, <clears throat> with different marketing technologies. And by the way, feel free to uh, drop a connect uh, request in LinkedIn. I, I generally do approve <laughs> basically everybody who does that. Happy to connect if, if you're interested in that. But enough about me. Let's dig into today's topic. So um, it's better to not assume uh, that everybody is an expert of B2B marketing analytics. So let's start with that one. Uh, go through a bit like what is included in different license levels um, of Pardot and my personal favorite top three use cases, one of which is the email notification, which we're going to be diving in to um, in a more detail in, in the live demo. Uh, plus, we'll likely have a generous amount of time for a Q&A and feedback. And well, Ben, if we do end up a bit early, I, I think that's that's perfectly fine, right? So I don't know. It's it's quite a quite a simple thing to do, really, the actual topic of today. So I think the demo will be quite, quite um, Short and effective, let's say. So first up, um, what is B2B marketing analytics? So B2B marketing analytics is an add-on uh, to the marketing cloud account engagement um, license that you buy. <clears throat> it being an add-on, it 
doesn't really say where to find it, but it's an analytics app that you can find uh, in in Salesforce through the um, uh, app um, menu, app selector menu, and it's called, I believe, Analytics Studio. Yeah, <laughs> had to make sure that I, I added it the right way. But it's, it's Analytics Studio in the app selector menu, uh, but um, you set it up in the marketing uh, setup or marketing settings. Uh, the same way that you set up, for example, Lightning Email Builder, Lightning Landing Page Builder, and and the different um, Einstein scoring uh, and Einstein opportunity scoring and and um, the uh, campaign influence features. So basically, wherever you set up all those different account engagement settings on the Salesforce side. That's the place where you'll also find the B2B marketing analytics setup. And if you don't have this set up already in your org, it typically takes like, I would say half a day to do the initial setup, assuming that you have everything in place. I've seen that there are some cases where you have a very old org and there's some legacy data, uh, maybe some custom Apex classes, uh, test classes that are messing up the uh, setup. So there may be some issues, but usually I would say eight out of 10 times the setup of the marketing analytics app goes quite smoothly. And in case you run into issues, I would, I would not hesitate to contact Salesforce support because um, you usually get forward with their help. Um, I would like to also add that it's not a replacement for Salesforce uh, reports and dashboards. Uh, well, one of, one of the reasons is simply due to licensing. So there's limited number of seats that are available for uh, B2B marketing analytics. So it's really used for, um, I would say like, managers, analytics profession, professionals, and um, sort of data-driven sales managers. These kind of people who like to dig into data use a uh, better part of their like uh, working time to uh, analyze customer and campaign and opportunity data. So it's not meant to be used, or I wouldn't spend the limited number of licenses for say regular um salespeople or content creators in 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 that that sense so um it's better to think of it as like um advanced level analytics tool rather than like a full on replacement for salesforce reports and it allows you to interact with your data in a very different, uh, much more in-depth way than what Salesforce provides. So if you wanted to create like uh, custom custom measurements or um, for example, like analyzing different kinds of like uh, custom, custom measurements, like uh, let's say uh, bounce rates within the last seven days or uh, open rates and so on that you didn't have in Salesforce uh, by default. You would have to create these manually each time with formula fields or um, some other method. So it's it's much more clunky clunky to do those in in um, Salesforce Core, uh, whereas you can do those quite easily on the go using the B2B marketing analytics. And um, one nifty tool is that you have these interactive filters that allow you to drill down on data. And this, by the way, also applies to dashboards that you have in Salesforce. So um, if you, for example, try to look at the engagement history dashboards uh, in Salesforce, you can also use the interactive filters there so that's that's pretty nice.
I would say. And yeah, it's if you if you've known like if you know CRM analytics in a more general level, that's the sort of home, so to say, for the B2B marketing analytics tool. So B2B marketing analytics is really a um how would I say like a light version of the CRM analytics application. So it's a very dedicated version of that platform, really, uh, under the hood. Um, <clears throat> certain key capabilities uh, for those who don't know. So in my mind, at least B2B marketing analytics is not being used that much. Almost never I run into customers who actually use it that much. And it's not that um, the platform itself would be like overly complicated or that um, like people wouldn't want to use an analytics app. It's mostly that people don't even know about it. They don't necessarily know the existence of the platform. Um, here I could actually ask our lovely audience today, like how many of you have actually used B2B marketing analytics in the past? Can you guys? Shout out from online, from the chat. Or yeah, everyone's on. Everyone is on mute. So um, if you if you, have, <laughs> you, you can, can shout, but I won't yeah. hear. If you have used it, put it in the in the chat. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Yeah, so we've got uh, Ganesh has used it. Mike has used it. Ethan said it's he's tried, but it's too complex, so it just sits there. Jenny's never used mm. it. Patrick has. Casey has. Tyler has, but it's not too comfortable. Justin has used it, but it's a little complex. Yeah. So three complicated and, and the rest have never or have used. So I, I would say like mixed, mixed feedback. And I'm not surprised. Uh, it does have its own learning curve. But the good, good thing is that if you've used any this kind of like uh, marketing analytics or data analytics tools in the past, say Datarama or, um, well, nowadays it's called Marketing Cloud Intelligence, but Datarama, Looker Studio, previously called Google Data Studio, they all pretty much um, work the same way, or even Power BI. So the names are a bit different, uh, for example, with CRM analytics or B2B uh, marketing analytics, you use these kinds of words like lenses and apps, whereas in another platform, they could be called like reports or um, I don't know, dashboards and, and whatnot. So you always have to learn the lingo, but the basic principles are usually the same. So that's that's like a good, good part of it. But, and also uh, if you are a marketer in an organization, I would say that don't hesitate to start trying because like you can't really break anything if you're using B2B marketing analytics, uh, it, especially if you um, always clone the existing out of the box uh, dashboards and play with those. Because if you're the only one using it and it doesn't really have impact in, in the CRM itself, there's really nothing that you could basically do that causes any damage. So you might as well start trying it and do like, Start with baby steps. Uh, start just by exploring the dashboards, looking at what the out-of-the-box dashboards have to offer. And slowly you can start incorporating using the um, application for your business purposes. For example, when you go through, I don't know, uh, marketing performance, uh, like campaign performance uh, with the team and so on. Now, um, regarding licensing, um, it's good to understand that as well, because it's not always clear to understand uh, what is included in what. So I wanted to just briefly go through that side as well. <clears throat> so the thing is that basically all marketing cloud account engagement editions have some level of marketing analytics included. And uh, the, by this, I mean that um, 
you do get the engagement history dashboard uh, with all license levels. And that is actually a B2B marketing analytics dashboard that you embed inside um, the Salesforce um, record pages. So you can use that engagement history dashboard uh, for custom home pages, or you can add it to, for example, your campaign campaign records. And for that, you have these five licenses that you can use. I think it's like analytic embedded analytics view only, or something uh, as bizarre. I don't know, Ben. Do you recall by heart what was that permission set called? Yeah, it's, it's like it's analytics view only user. I think is what yeah. it's like. Uh, yeah, it's it's well, it's, it, it's, it is a mouthful anyway. Yeah, but, it is. It is. Um, it is a bit, a bit wordy. Like it's very prescriptive. Um, yeah. It's not like a just like a like it's not, not just like like a tag. It's just like it says it's like the name of it is what it is what it does basically. That that is true. But uh, what it doesn't say is that you don't need to give that permission set to a person who already has B2B marketing analytics license. So my two cents is give your B2B marketing analytics licenses, meaning plus advanced pre premium edition users, give those dedicated licenses to people who actually work with the analytics and give the view only licenses for engagement history dashboards and the other embedded dashboards to sales managers, um, business execs, basically anybody who needs to see that data within Salesforce. You can even create like a custom uh, dashboard uh, or like a homepage that includes all of the uh, these different like dashboards you've created with B2B marketing analytics. So you don't really miss out on anything if you're just there to see the data. If you don't have to work with the data and um, handle the different, like create new measurements and, and so on, you don't really need the dedicated licenses for that. And that means that you'll save up your precious B2B marketing analytics licenses and basically uh, use those uh, licenses that you have uh, more wisely. And uh, with the advanced or premium level licenses, there's a lot more of those view only licenses that you can give uh, around. And what you see also uh, down in the bottom, uh, this B2B marketing analytics plus. So <laughs> this, this goes down uh, this is like a niche within a niche, I would say. So odds are that none of you probably have used B2B or Analytics Plus. And uh, in fact, I could ask around, like, again, like, has anybody uh, used this ever in, in the past, this B2B Marketing Analytics Plus? I would be very surprised if somebody says yes. Most uh, likely, no. Knows. Yeah, no. <laughs> they have a client who has it. Not that Ooh. I'm aware of. If, if so, it was by accident. Um, <laughs> you wouldn't use it by accident. It's it's an expensive tool, I would say. But um, this is actually a powerful tool that um, you might not think about, or you might not like think that it's relevant, but it could be relevant especially for a b2b marketing company um and that's because of the uh, fourth bullet uh, fourth major bullet here so ability to include external data sources this is really something that um you really need if you want to do like holistic marketing analytics because you do want to connect your data sources together, like, for example, media data, uh, search data, uh, social media data. So what you can do is you get exports from those um, uh, channels and you provide that data through CSV files. And that's very common practice, uh, even with 
platforms like Google, uh, Looker Studio, and so on. So CSV files are the sort of preferred way to connect these kind of disparate marketing data sources. And, and that's really a key factor if you want to build like account-based marketing analytics that also contains bits and pieces of multi-channel marketing. So this might be the solution that you're uh, looking for. Plus uh, you have predictive insights which you don't have in B2B marketing analytics vanilla. So you have these three different applications. So the B2B marketing analytics, which is the one that you get normally, but also predictive insights for account-based marketing and marketing campaign insights. And those are pretty nice, especially if your volumes are large, you're doing global campaigns or like campaigns on different locales and you want to identify new growth potential, you can do it quite easily with predictive insights. And um, basically everything comes out of the box, but you can also uh, use the B2B MA plus to design your own models if you need to. Uh, any questions so far before we go into the practical? Practicalities. I don't see any questions. Guess, no. All right. Keep them coming, by the way. Ben can interrupt me at any time if you have any questions. So feel free to ask anything. So, my favorite ones, uh, top three ones, um, these are not like things that you would use well not maybe every day, but maybe weekly. So first up is the email notifications, which we'll be demoing shortly. And then we have the embedded dashboards. So not only the engagement history dashboard, but all of the other dashboards as well that you build with B2B MA, you can actually embed those within uh, Salesforce as well. So um keep that in mind and you can actually do it the other way around so if you have a nice salesforce dashboard already built up and you want to include that or some other like record um page or something you can actually uh incorporate those to your b2b ma uh, dashboards as well so the embedding basically works two ways and that's uh, actually nifty uh, when you're working with the presentation mode. So especially when you're uh, sort of like uh, starting out with B2B MA, most likely you all already have some kind of dashboards present in Salesforce and maybe you're too lazy or you don't have the time to recreate everything from scratch. So what you can do is you can uh, sort of uh, embed those uh, already built-in um, views from Salesforce as well to um, B2B MA. But the presentation mode is, is also nice if you have this kind of like internal meetings, for example, or even with external stakeholders. Instead of building like a PowerPoint deck, you can have a dashboard that automatically keeps up to date uh, that you can present and you can use the filters during present mode. Uh, so you have full control over the widgets. So it's not a static presentation, but something that you can fiddle around with as much as you need during presentation. So that's, that's one of my favorites as well. Um, I'd like to ask you before we head to the demo, is there some other use case anybody would like to add to the list have, how have you used b2b ma i did i did a thing uh timo this it was this um, i basically kind of became, like sort of learned b2b ma just by literally hacking away at it because yeah it's not <laughs> that's the way you do it i mean there, there's more resources today than there was then this was probably this is over this is more than three years ago when three or maybe, maybe closer to four years ago and i mm -hmm. was trying to figure out, um, I was able to figure out how to 
in how to bring in Pardot engagement data into mm-hmm. a one of the pre-built. Um, I think it was the uh, I'm, I'm, I don't remember which form which 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 of the out of the boxes it was. I think it was by mm-hmm. I think it might have been the maybe the marketing manager one or the ABM. Yeah. I think it actually might have, might have been the ABM. Um, you do know that there's an actual engagement dashboard already present, but maybe it wasn't there back yeah. three no, years this, ago. They wanted to be able to have this, have the ABM the same. Dashboard okay. And also be able to, with so when and when I when I when I select like when I when I um, do the um, what's the the thing what's the the function where you click when you, when you when you click on something and then it filters everything underneath it. Like you, like if I select an account, it'll like filter. a cascading filter, cascading or like faceting or something. There's some word that they use. So, but they yep. wanted when I hit when I hit the account, when I when I when I selected or kind of honed in on the account, it would it would facet or kind of cascade all, and it, and it would only it would show me then like mm. email data, landing page data, form data for all contacts in that account. In addition to like oh yeah, you would sort of drill down to that. Yeah, yeah. But that's okay, but that's not, that's not out of the box, and so it was, it it is it it is possible to kind of to hack away at it and to bring in other pieces of other 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 data points uh, from Pardot to kind of kind of uh, add on to. It is not easy to do. You've got definitely mm-hmm. like have to understand the data flows and the and 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 make sure that you're. That you're a lot that you're clicking on, or that you have kind of attached the different data, the, the different mm. uh, pieces of data, so that when you click something, it will trigger that cascading effect correctly. Yeah, it, uh, they need to have this kind of like data relationship between each other. Yeah, to and really a data function. relationship is, I mean, I mean beyond just like just just fastening it together, you have to also make sure that the um, that the uh, the uh, that you've updated the the actual uh, what's the word not not the, um, the what's the thing where it's all like it's all kind of tied together like the that like canvas view of all the, of all of the, like the different data, data points. model <laughs> yeah yeah the data model um, was like has all the inputs and it's kind of run from end to end you can't just like yeah. expect to just do it um, you have to yeah, like it needs in, like, you, you like, need to have like a bit of a data architecture. Um, experience when you're fiddling around with those but i mean you still pretty much learn it by doing but uh i'd like to ask at this point like how many of you work for a salesforce partner meaning like you're not in in in-house role versus being a consultancy or isv like vendor because uh what you do get is if you have the part of demo uh, or developer uh, developer org you can actually access speed to be ma through that so then you get uh, access to both the b2b marketing analytics but also you see the demo data there uh, which you can explore and fiddle around with at your at your leisure without damaging anything because um, it's never it's never optimal to learn something in a live situation, I would say. Oh, Ben, do you have any idea who how many of the participants? Um, I know are? that there are a few of us. What is okay, Brandon wants to present something. So I'm going okay. to present something. Okay. You want to present? Sure. Oh, no, sorry. I was just I was just raising my hand as a partner. Sorry. Oh, I'm no. sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I was like, it keeps coming in. Yeah, like, I'm like, so <laughs> okay, yeah. No, yeah. Brandon. Brandon works. Brandon. Uh, Brandon has uh, works. Is a Hello, partner. Brandon. I didn't know you were hey. there, by the way. Hey, Tim. I'm going to keep my camera off because I'm not a model. But uh, nice to <laughs> nice to hear you. <laughs> All right. Cool. I think I I heard you say that joke one one time before. Uh, in uh, Dreamforce, was it? <laughs> <laughs> you're you're reusing your dad jokes. Nice. That's like next level. I appreciate it. Um, but so, yeah, I knew that, 
so Brandon is a partner, um, or works for a partner. I might be a couple others who are partners. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, um, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not off. Uh, Inez might be mm. with a partner. Tatiana might be with a partner. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. <clears throat> Um, then I have unfortunate news. You have to learn actually in yeah. the production environment. But as I said, it's it's not a biggie. If if nobody's using it in your organization, um, then you can't really do any harm by like working around with it. And if you manage to destroy everything, you can just uninstall and reinstall the application. Uh, just reach out to Salesforce support and they'll they'll get you covered. So nothing, you can't really do any damage there anyway. It's just that if you're working with a partner, you cannot do that really with the client's environment. <laughs> you cannot go breaking their stuff. So please, uh, uh, rather I would say, uh, order one of these uh, dev developer orgs and then study there. And once you've set up the B2B MA, you'll find it here in Analytics Studio, which I have here, but I'll, I'll show you where to find everything. So when you first uh, launch Analytics Studio, uh, please do follow the implementation guide and follow it exactly, because if you don't, something might go wrong and then you have to do things all over again. Um, it might take some time to really get uh, adjusted to the layout and how everything's basically organized. But the good thing to understand is that everything revolves around applications. So you have this application that you have to build based on a template. So B2B marketing analytics is actually a template that you use to build your app and you have to name it by yourself. So basically uh, every analyst in your organization could even have their own version of B2B marketing analytics if they wanted. So you could create new app and use the B2B marketing and analytics template. Like you see here, template used B2B marketing analytics 2.5. And you can click here to reconfigure if you need. Uh, here you see the different data sets that are being used and the different assets. When we click dashboards, we can see that it comes with the four pre-built dashboards that you can work around with. Now for today's uh, topic, we wanted to talk about um, email churn. So basically, uh, bounce rates or unsubscribes. So we can uh, think about like um, typical typical use case. So uh, as a marketer, you would want to know if you do like campaigns, batch and blast or automated campaigns regularly, you want to know if there's a, um, how would I say like a, aberrant behavior or some something like that's unusual like you're uh, like all over the southern you're you're like seeing um uh like two times as much unsubscribes as usually or or something like that so you want to be notified as quickly as possible if there's something um like out of the ordinary and these kind of situations are really good for these email notifications. And setting those email notifications up is quite easy, actually. Uh, and the thing that sort of I was a bit surprised is how you actually do it. So we can edit uh, the um, dashboards that we have here. So everything here is out of the box except this one that I added here. Now you'll see that this is displaying no results found, but the reason is that there is, this is a dev, developer org. So if we click preview, it doesn't have data from like, uh, 
by from the from the last week as you can see so no data here so that's the reason so we can uh, we can just uh, go back to the initial view here but normally th this would function fine it just says that no results found because it doesn't have any uh email opt-outs uh, in the last seven days when you do have data there it should display the data properly and basically how i set this up is that you just create a chart like so and then you can uh, select the actually i'll show it from there because it's quicker that way just a moment so you can just double click that chart that you created you have to be sure that you're using the right uh, data set so if you're looking at email opt-outs, uh, you want to use um, email um, data sets. So there's email and email templates. Actually, you might want to use both of them. I'm not 100%, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure um, if you should use actually both, but I don't remember if they both have the same data but usually it doesn't hurt having them both here and then what you can do is you can use the total opt-outs field here i just renamed that to sum of total opt-outs in the last seven days because i added a filter here that says seven days ago to today so you can create like a custom uh, filtering for each widget. And that means that this widget always uses this uh, date filtering instead of the uh, date uh, toggle that you have uh, in the dashboard itself. So this will always be displaying the data from the last seven days. <clears throat> and when we have that data visible here, in this widget um there should be what was it i just have to it was Sorry. <laughs> Here. An interaction. Maybe it was at, oh yeah, sorry. I was like, where where the heck was that notification? But um, sorry, <laughs> bad demo effect here. So you actually have to set it, the notification in the preview mode. So here you can, once you're happy with the widget itself, you set the no notification here. Uh, so you can create it uh, for yourself. Uh, and each analyst can set their own um, like email notifications uh, for, for the widgets that they're interested in. So let's say that you have five different analysts that work in different business lines 
and you have business line specific dashboards, then odds are that not everybody is interested in the same things, same business lines uh, opt out rate. So you can actually set it here. And basically depending on what kind of a opt out measurement you're using, you could use it, use a custom one, which is like percentage, like opt out percentage from the overall like uh, number sent or you could use just the total opt-outs, but then you just have to be like specific on what would be the th uh, threshold value for each week. Let's say that if there's like over 100 uh, opt-outs within the last seven days, you can um, notify yourself, say weekly on Monday at 8 a.m then save and that's it so you create a widget and then preview and set notification and you can do these um like uh several of these different kinds of notifications if you want and for goals if you're doing like a if for example, you're measuring like opportunities, opportunity values that you have like a set goal for each year. You can use this notify me only for the first time conditions are met. And then you can do like celebration that, yay, we hit our yearly goal already. So there's all kinds of nice um, business functions uh, or business applications for this notification here. Sorry for <laughs> sorry for messing about with that uh, notification. I was like, where the heck was that? But it was here in the preview. Sorry, but that's basically it. So you first navigate your your way into a dashboard. Uh, then you build the widget that you want to uh, have as, or like the measurement. You add the measurement to the widget that you want to be notified by and then you set the notification for that widget and that's it cool thank you for sharing that's uh that's super interesting and that's a fairly straightforward thing that can be done in any uh any b2b uh org um the mm -hmm. The idea, I mean, this this kind of sprang out of like of something that I I had posted about like uh, a very kind of lo-fi way of managing your database, like your your um your database churn kind of on like a recurring basis. And you dropped in and said, "Hey, well, here's this thing that'll tell you in real time um, how things are going." So um, that's I mean, that's definitely kind of the probably the the better way to do it. Like if you wanted to like know if you if like if you were to have sent like a like a series of campaigns, if you had like a like a particularly um heavy email week or month mm. or whatever, and you and and you wanted to and you're and you're like, okay, I need to keep an eye out for these in the event that suddenly if we if we sent ten thousand emails in a in a week and we got and suddenly I'm getting notifications that I'm that every other day I'm hitting my threshold of of opt outs. That's something that you're. That's something that you're going to want to know in well, in real time. Yeah, but also look at it from the positive angle. I mean, you should, as a marketing executive, you want to notify sales in advance if there's a campaign that's getting like a lot of traction, so that they can prepare that. Okay, now we actually have to up our game in contacting the uh, leads because uh, you don't want to end up in a situation where you have like good leads coming in, but um you don't have enough resources to actually contact them by phone or email so that's also like a good good example and one also is this like goal setting and using that as a sort of a trigger that when you meet a certain goal you you get notified so there's all kinds of different ways to use it and it's as you saw it's very easy to set up you don't need to be like a data scientist or anything. You just need to understand 
where to find things and now you should basically know and you can set the basic ones like what uh, ben told there like the email opt-out ones first and then you can explore a bit see what kind of measurements there are out of the box and then you can also work with those measurements and transform them like i, I told you like uh for example clicks in the last 30 days or you can even do like uh simple math calculations like build like rates and and percentages if you want <clears throat> any questions or comments uh tyler had a question what's the best way to start getting more familiar with b2bma well i mean it depends on your role as i mentioned best way is usually just to start hacking <laughs> hacking and, and working with it uh, you can't really do damage there so that's the best way of course you want to do like get like additional information so there's a bunch of good videos in youtube by the salesforce community group so those i would get in touch uh, like start watching those at the same time what you can do is actually you can work with uh, your own instance at the same time as you watch those videos so that way you get both the hands-on experience and you get the guided uh, sort of teaching at the same time if you're a partner then you're you'll be happy to know that there's actually a certification for this and a curriculum called um what is it account engagement reporting and analytics so technically it contains all of the analytics and reporting things included the uh, including the legacy stuff like the engagement history metrics and and fields uh, but the uh, majority of the exam questions were actually around uh, b2b ma and the curriculum is pretty good so if you have partner access then the partner learning camp is a good way to learn as well for those that don't have um that are not partners. I'm, I know that Salesforce has their demo orgs. Um, I don't remember if B2BMA is one of them. Um, uh, there's. Uh, well, you do order the part of dem dev org um, through the partner learning camp, though. Yeah, well, you can also get one just straight up, like from, like you don't have to get it from the partner learning camp. You can get a partner demo org. Um, but it's not a demo org. It's a developer org. It's a different, different okay, beast. That's fair. That's fair. Um, but I'm not sure. I'm just. I don't want to raise any false hopes. That's that's just the thing. Yeah, but I don't. I'm not. I'm not certain what's in there. If, what, if you're the there? owner of that org, then I mean, the world's your oyster. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, there is a, uh, let's see here, there is a CRM analytics trial org that is, I mean, but that's not... different uh, again, because CRM analytics is the full platform. These are dedicated uh, apps. So you can learn the basics of the platform, but then you don't have that um, same data sets or the, the same sort of look and feel that you have with this um, this application. So yeah, I would say that if if you're not a partner, but you have Pardot in use and it's more than just a growth addition, just study, learn it in, in your own system. And if you end up breaking stuff, just reinstall it. Uh, you'll get help from Salesforce support. Uh, that's That's really the best way. Yeah. Then you can yeah, actually I, utilize your own data and mm -hmm. it makes much more sense. Yeah, I don't know if there's necessarily a way to do it and with, with B2BMA, but um there's a I mean there I know that there are definitely videos out there. Obviously you're we're doing yeah. one now. YouTube. Um, yeah, YouTube has a lot. Plenty of good. Um there was one um there was a video from uh, uh Mar Dreamin la uh, in twenty two. I'll put a link 
to that as well for B2BMA. Yeah, there's definitely um, a decent amount of videos. So the thing that I try to help people kind of rem remember is that B2BMA is, is, is an app that, that lives on top of CRM analytics. So mm. some of the things that people will, will kind of get, get caught up on is they'll get very focused on B2BMA, but ultimately the majority, like the core stuff that you're doing with B2BMA is, is CRM analytics stuff, like learning how to build. Yeah, land, that's true. So out. you can use those like trailheads that deal with uh, the uh, basic user interface, hey, how stuff is structured and so on. And I think there's even like a, like open, open certification. I mean, like, like uh, not partner specific certification for CRM analytics. It's, is it still called something like Einstein discovery in, insights or something like that? Yeah, there's a certification. Um uh discovery uh, because if you really want the deep dive and you want to get support on using that tool usually these kind of like regular salesforce certifications they do have like a instructor led course that you can attend of course that takes some time and usually those cost around like a few thousand dollars uh, but yeah. I mean, if your organization wants to invest in marketing analytics, uh, I would say it's better to use an existing platform if that has the capabilities rather than you actually buy a separate system like or start like setting up a separate system like Power BI or like even Datarama or something. And that en ends up costing way much more than <laughs> using the tool that you're already paying for, basically. And that's really the killer here that you're uh, like, odds are that you're actually paying for this tool, but you're not using it. So that's my like two cents here. Start using yeah, it. Uh, yeah, there are, um, there are uh, courses that are. If you do, if you are a firm, if you guys do use um, the uh, use uh, analytics, or you see, like you learn that there's that there's a need to have um, someone on the team who's kind of a SME. Um, there are two uh, firm analytics uh, courses that are available that are expert led. It, I mean, team knows exactly right. They are um, they're not cheap. Uh, but it's more of a, if they want to invest in you, if your company wants to invest in you to be, yeah, it's, it's an investment. Yeah. Um, I put the links in the chat here. There's building lenses, dash dashboards and apps and CRM analytics. So it's a full day course or there's uh, implement and manage CRM analytics at the three day course. Um, so those are things if you guys, if, if you're, if the company that you're with is very deep in CRM analytics, then being very good with CRM analytics will take you far when it comes to if you guys say, oh, now I want to add B2BMA. Being strong in the fun and the core of CRM analytics will make B2BMA, make, make it easier mm. for you to manipulate B2BMA to do the things you want to do. Yeah, or even if you're just starting up, out with the analytics and your like, business executives are like, we need to invest in analytics. Well, yep. investing in analytics isn't necessarily buying a new platform it might be just like investing in capabilities and competence yep exactly um all right well we're um we're kind of we're at at the most of the top of the hour so um i haven't seen any more questions so um all right well thank you so much uh timo for this presentation and for sharing uh some of the knowledge here um the recording will be up on the event. I'll, I'll email this out to everybody who RSVP'd and um, also put it up on the Pardot Geeks blog as well. Um, uh, if you have something else in the future, Timo, that you'd like to present about, um, you have an open invitation, just feel free to reach out and uh, we'll, we'll get you on the calendar again. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Thank have you for the really great questions. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you everybody for joining. Have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye. Yep.